So good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is safe and secure in this uh, rainy season. Thanks for joining the great webinar on this generative AI applications and its benefits. Today we have our esteemed speaker, uh, Jansi Sophia. Uh, she has an uh, established enterprise architecture with 22 years of IT experience in architecture advisory, governance and delivery solutions with exposure to technologies in public cloud, Azure and GCP, big data Hadoop and app monetization with strong expertise in domain like healthcare, insurance and retail. She has having strong expertise in Java, J2EE, Spring, MVC and Spring Boot technology frameworks. So as as the topic is generative AI, today we are going to discuss on as um, the definition generative AI refers to AI techniques that learn a representation of artifacts from data and use it to generate brand new unique artifacts that reassemble but don't repeat the original data. Generative AI can produce totally novel content including text, images, video, audio and structure. The rise of generative AI briefs innovation, paving the way of new business models and applications. It drastically improves productivity and efficiency across a wide range of industries. ChatGTP is a common example. The session focuses on giving a high level of overview of generative AI its practical applications and benefits. So now, uh, Sophia will take over the session. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you so much, Sasha, for a very nice introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm not sure from whatever time zones we are. Uh, thanks for joining the session. Uh, along with me, I have Mahendra, who took the earlier session with uh, CSI, and uh, he's also a uh, senior uh, solution and enterprise architect working for uh, Capgemini. So we will be presenting the very high level overview and talk about a little bit on artificial intelligence. And then we talk about high level uh, algorithms or models within generative AI. And I also created a small demo of uh, using one of the generative AI tools uh, to do automation of coding. Uh, so I would like to uh, share that demo as well. Hope if we have that time. Uh, so we will uh, get started. Uh, Mahindra, can you share the screen? So we will get into the introduction. Uh, we have a certain ag agenda. Hope it is visible to everyone. Yes, it is. Right. Put it in FI mode, the Mahindra, and then uh, you can start with the introduction. Okay. Um, myself, Mahindra, working for Capgemini as a technical architect, and uh, my previous session, like uh, Jesse mentioned, uh, given some of the microservices trends in the previous session. Um, today we are going to talk about generative AI. Uh, I think. Uh, behind every great evolution of software or technology there must be a lot of think tank towards in terms of what we need to do and when we need to do and why we have to do it so these are the things which every must everyone must think about it so considering that uh, considering that factors alone with the ai in evolution uh, the civilization has taken a great leap in terms of uh, in current modern day technology. Okay, so artificial intelligence is given a lot of success towards in, in the respective areas where we want to do it. So as title and uh, unsubtitle make sense that uh, we are shifting our human intelligence to the artificial intelligence. That where we need to talk about uh, one of the area uh, where the new class of artificial intelligence, which is the generative AI, it is a buzzword in nowadays. Uh, since the release of chat GPT in the no last November. Okay. So with that, I would like to just give you the brief agenda of what we are going to talk about. 
um, we are going to just talk about the artificial intelligence uh, because before we talk about generative AI, we need to talk about what is the artificial intelligence is all about, but where exactly the which class this uh, generative AI is coming into place and uh, how that journey has started and uh, what are the workflows and what are the different models which is um, which we are adapting in the generative AI and uh, what are the different applications uh, which is impacting the generative AI and uh, like every software solution there will be a, a pros and cons and uh, we need to see how that and uh, how that is going to be delivered and uh, we sh we have to we will be discussing about the challenges and the ethical considerations and uh, what are the prospects of, and the impacts which generative AI is creating and lastly we'll think about the um, talk about the generative AI trends and the developments which is happening currently with respect to the development side with the consumer side and also from the development side and lastly uh, Jesse will give you the since we are we are from tech background we will be giving a development tool from the tab 9 how that it is helpful for the code uh, development development team to give the productivity in terms of uh, uh, generating the code on uh, different proposals and the requirement which is giving with that introduction and agenda i would like to hand over to jesse for to talk about the first topic of the agenda Thanks, Mahindra. So as uh, Mahindra rightly said, it is very important. I think most of us would already know what is artificial intelligence, what are the different type of algorithms available uh, within artificial intelligence and what are the different categories. Uh, but we felt that before getting into generative A, it is very key to find out what relationship generative A has with A and what is the differentiation and which part of A does generative A belong. So that's a brief motive of giving a little bit refresh on artificial intelligence. So as we all know, A is nothing but you try to mimic the human brain or you try to mimic the human intelligence. So you will you educate the mission to apply advanced analysis, to apply logic based techniques, and it will also you train them to interpret the events and also to make automated decisions and accordingly also to take action. So A1 or normal example, whatever we see is Whenever you go for a search, you search for a particular product in Google and wherever you go, any uh, B2B sites, right? You go to Amazon or you go to Big Basket, you'll always end up in looking for that product. That product uh, prediction will always come into your space whenever you move into any particular uh, commerce websites, right? So that's the main power of artificial intelligence. It's based on your customer sentiment. It's able to predict the different uh, uh, product, whatever we are looking at and the available choices to the customer by enhancing the cus uh, consumer experience. So this is a, one of the example on A. So as we all know, so A is nothing but trying to mimic the human intelligence and machine learning is nothing but a subset of artificial intelligence. So it has little bit advancement that it has algorithms which will train itself based on the data is being pro provided. It evolves itself. It educates itself based on the different type of data, whatever we are going to provide it to it. It will enhance itself and improve the decision making cap capabilities. That's a, a power of machine learning and deep learning is again a subset of machine learning. Here it is much more deeper as the name suggests it will go into much more deeper level than a regular machine learning model. But it will like uh, abstract the data, it will transform the data, it will extract the knowledge from the raw data in whatever form it is available. So it will basically learn to really understand how the data is structured and then it will try to imitate how a human brain will behave or react or do certain actions based on the knowledge of the data it's going to acquire. So it is it has multiple layers in it and it had, can do much more than a machine learning. And generative AI is a part of a deep learning uh, part of AI. So generative AI has a lot of neural networks to support. So on the right side, if you look at, I think uh, this is not that visible and when we share the presentation, it would be a little bit visible. Uh, I wanted to touch base certain concepts within uh, machine learning, like supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning is not relevant for this context of generative AI but it is also a part of machine learning and then deep learning. If you are able to view uh, deep learning, you will see something called uh, a gun, right? It is nothing but a generative adversarial network and it is part of a deep learning. 
which we will cover in the next slide. So the idea here is generative AI is more like generating new content almost similar to what has been provided or what has been trained at and it is not a part of a supervised learning. So that's why I just wanted to cover a little bit basics around supervised learning and unsupervised learning and then lead you into generative AI. Mahendra, can you move on to the next slide? So uh, as I said, within machine learning, there are four major categories. The first part is the supervised learning. So supervised learning, uh, I think I'm not sure how many of us have already known about it. So supervised learning is nothing but it really works by based on the input and the output data. Okay. So what we do is we train the model by providing lot of input data and then you label the data and then the algorithm will automatically alter the model to create an output which is as much close to the possible result. Okay, to watch as close as possible to the desired result. So that's the main purpose of supervised learning. And now a very good example I can uh, give uh, when I were talk about supervised learning is you always would have heard about classification and whenever you uh, learned a lot of regression techniques in your earlier school days, you would have spoken about linear regression a lot, right? So classification and linear regression is a top, uh, it's a part of a supervised learning. So let's talk about classification. So classification, it what it will do is you label lot of input data. Okay, you label it and classification, what it will do is and biggest example of classification is a email spam detection, right? So you have lot of emails in your uh, uh, Outlook or whatever email format you use. So this classification, it will help you to identify certain set of spams. Okay, so the model will have some label set of data in which it is trained on and it will automatically help you to identify whether a particular mail, it will help you to classify the spam mails separately and segregate it and the rest of the regular mails will flow through that. So classification is one example of supervised learning. And the second one is the linear regression. I think we all, everybody would know about uh, the graph, right, where you will be able to plot the X and Y axis and try to uh, have a regression line uh, which will help you to identify uh, what which are the which percentile to which one belongs right uh, i will not I, I think it is complex but i can give you an example of a linear regression so the biggest example of linear reg uh, regression is the prediction of a product pricing right say you are in a particular area and you want to purchase a house of uh, say 2400 square feet with built up area of 2000 and each locality will have certain pricing and with this particular linear regression you will be able to predict in a span of time how much maybe in two three years or in five years how much that particular building or that particular house would cost so this is an example of a predictive product you can predict anything so that's a an example of a linear regression now when we talk about unsupervised learning right the biggest difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning is supervised learning will have a labeled data sets so you will say that say you have a class you have a class of 100 students i say there are five subjects and each subject each person has scored this much marks so based on their history their midterm their monthly test their quarterly test or the semester one semester two so it you will be feeding that along with certain labels and you'll be training the model and uh, the supervised learning will have a trained labeled data set but the algorithm will be able to based on your random data whatever you are going to feed into the system it will help you to identify based on the trained label it will help you to identify maybe in semester five or semester six that particular individual can score this much mark because they have already labeled the input data so that's why classification regression is one example where we will be providing a labeled data set but when you talk about unsupervised learning it does not have any labeled data set. That's the biggest difference. So what you will do is it will directly work on the real raw data. Okay, there will not be any historical labeled responses. So based on the provided labeled set of data, unlabeled set of data, what it will do is it will help you to categorize the data. And one good, very good example of unsupervised learning is the clustering algorithm. So when we talk about clustering algorithm, uh, a biggest example is a customer segregation, right? So even let's talk about Instagram. So people with certain ages will be interested towards something. And if I come from an IT background, I would be interested in something. And if I am planning to uh, say, uh, look into some of the technology training, 
then so what here it will do is it will help you to cluster the customers into different segments and it will not have any historical labeled responses provided into the model so that's the main difference so if you look at generative a generative a is a type of unsupervised learning or a semi supervised learning it will not part of a supervised learning so that's the biggest differentiation i would like to highlight here and when you talk about deep learning right so deep learning as we discussed in the first slide it has it uses multiple layers to solve multiple problem it can extract the knowledge from the data and it will transform it at every level it will go deeper and deeper and deeper so that's why it is able to solve much more complex problem and with really high accuracy and lesser manual tuning so that's the power of a uh, deep learning reinforcement learning it is not relevant to the gen ai concept but it is more like uh, you will reward certain desired behavior and you train the model accordingly gaming and robotics are one good area where reinforcement learning will be been used if you look at pubg right you will get lot of reward points as you when we go into next level right so that's primarily driven by reinforcement learning and the other two keywords which i wanted to highlight which will lead into generative ai is the discriminative modeling and the generative modeling when we talk about discriminative modeling right we talk about an english synonym discriminative so it is nothing but classify the existing data so it is a form of a supervised learning so it will help you to classify the existing data so that is discriminative modeling but generative modeling is nothing but you understand the data set you understand the data set structure you try to understand the knowledge of the raw data which is coming to you and then generate similar content almost similar content or replica of the similar content and can be an audio or a text file or a video image or anything on that sort so discrimination is more about classification that's a discriminative modeling which is in general an ai supervised learning will do and generative modeling it is more like you generate similar content by understanding the data structure so you will be able to completely create a new set of uh, similar content and whatever it's been fed into the system we can move on to the next slide mahendra somehow i am not able to control it okay so uh, mahendra will take over from here uh, so so generative ai uh, now we it is like more like uh, as harsha rightly said in the beginning of this particular webinar generative ai is more like you try to create similar outputs based on the data it's been trained on it will try to create reflect the characteristics of the trained data but it will not repeat it okay it will not it repeat it it will create almost similar content but it will not repeat it and the main difference between a and gen ai is gen ai is like trying to create new new content based on the images and text and audio it's been trained on but a is like try to mostly recognize the patterns or make predictions or do a classification etc okay so with that with that introduction of uh, uh artificial intelligence refresh and the terminologies which is we are using it uh like generative ai is is a is a subset of ai like um i think generative ai is is in my opinion it's going to be a, a most of it the general purpose techno uh, general purpose technology like how the previous evolutions like a steam engine electricity and the internet okay it's going to be uh because if someone asks me uh, is generative ai is a hype or it's a fundamental shift in terms of our civilization something but for me uh, i will say both because uh, when you think it in the two perspectives like scientific view and the business perspective if you think about the scientific view it is it gives a kind of some kind of a, uh, simplicity because of the simplicity and the models which has been generated and it almost act like in human manner but when it comes to the business point of view because uh, because it has that disruptive technology which will give you the uh, a lot of uh, very uh, it will give you the it will give you the lot of impact on the various business categories actually so generative ai is is has that impact in modern day world and uh, it's going to be a huge success in some areas and we need to think about how we have to deal with that 
anything which we are going to adapt it we have to adapt it re re responsibly and uh, wisely actually okay with that introduction with uh, about the generative ai like uh, generative ai is a part of artificial intelligence which we can generate the text actually we can create an audio files we can create a photographs and whatever the images whatever the things but the main uh, theme and the main uh, interesting point of out about the generative ai is that either we do something like from the text or from the speech okay so these are the main imperative things which will be helpful for the generative ai models to give some kind of a response actually okay whether you can, whether it is a some some kind of a um, see suppose uh, with the la latest introduction of uh, chat gpt uh, we will be giving a kind of a prompt prompts actually so prompt is nothing but uh, what kind of a text it's a kind of a text phrase which we will be giving it giving it as an input to the uh, system and then it will give you the response based on the uh, prompt which is giving prompt engineering is another set of that one which is uh, kind of we need to sort of a job where we need to train your chatbots according to the uh, which should be act like an human actually okay like uh, jesse mentioned uh, it uh, generative ai is a part of uh, a gnan where we can use where we can use to uh, generate some kind of a text based on input and uh, it's like a range of application from images texts and audio as well okay so how it has started because uh, for because everything has to start from somewhere so in 2010 uh, uh, generative ai started with a I, I think most of the applications which we are seeing like grammarly uh, uh, quilt boat ai all these things right which will certainly help you to whatever the sentence which you form it if you are having a chrome plugin or something it will help you to correct your sentence in a, a grammatical way so that it will help you in the in a correct i mean the, it will work like an a writing assistant for you in that is what the first model which is which we started in the 2010 then from 2014 it enhanced the meaning of that one meaning of the words which you have created and all those things and then from 2017 to 22 because every evolution starts like with a simple fact and simple model and from there it has to be uh, leveraged into the large scale and uh, it will be applicable to the various factors and various applications and various use cases as such actually so that's where this large language models has coming into place which is so uh, initially these large language models is cost uh, cost effective but while after building that and when you scale these uh, models it will be easy for them actually okay so with the introduction of chat gpt and uh, we do have a kind of a conversational language models so that we can create and uh, the chat gpt is like uh, is, it is easy for us to uh, uh, get the suppose if you want to uh, summarize a book of something okay uh, if you give some prompt saying that i want a summary of the particular book it gives you the a, a kind of an uh, bullet points these are the topics which is there in this chapter on something like that so those the prompt engineering coming into place and help you to uh, uh, get the response from the chat gpt uh, that is what how we will be designing it in the various applications which we will be discuss, discussing in the coming slides actually yeah jesse uh, so now uh, let's uh, understand how this generative ai works right so uh, it is like there is a lot of hype around it but uh, i we specifically i personally wanted to touch base on the workflow how in general a generative ai will, will work so it has basically a three set of components the first set of components is forming a neural network so i think if we come from a science background we all know that what is a neural network right so brains consists of neurons and the neurons transmit signals to the each other and they form a neural network it is exactly the same keyword it is meant for so the first step is whenever you want to do something in generative ai the first step is to form a database that database is nothing but you create a neural network by feeding in lot of images lot of text lot of audio files lot of video files which we can later be trained or right that that is a fundamental base you form the database completely using all of these images and you build the neural network that's the first step of the 
uh, uh, workflow for a generative AI. And once okay. you and once hello. you hello yeah yeah okay okay I will uh, I'll have some doubt yes. can I ask now or yeah, you can ask now or we can uh, probably we can ask now and then uh, probably the rest of the questions we will take at, at the end of the session. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry for the interruption. See, when you are calling about the neural networks, because there are so many concepts are there in neural networks, all those new concepts of neural networks should be implemented in the first stage. Uh, no, 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 no. So mm, the, yeah, each yeah. one is called a neural network. Say when we talk about classification model, right? That classification is a neural network. And when we talk about mm -hmm. generative adversarial network, that is a neural network and that will have a different style of Newton network. So we have something called style GAN. Uh, we have convolence no, neural network. Mm -hmm. So there are different neural networks. So the main idea as part of basics we need to understand is uh, there are different concepts within neural network. But uh, mm -hmm. mostly whatever we will do is we will form a neural network for a particular purpose. We will like I'll touch base that when I give an example of GAN. I think I think that okay, way okay. you will be probably, Thank you, you definitely, yeah, yeah, you will not be able to build so many neural networks, right? So you there will yes. be a specific purpose. Say let's take an example yes. of chat GPT. So chat GPT mm -hmm. is a large language model where it will help Correct. you to process the text, right? So it will be trained mm -hmm. only on some particular part of a neural network. You build that by forming different textual content. Then when you talk about DALI, it is another neural network. Uh, it will have another neural network based model that will get mm. work on a lot of uh, images so that it can create similar images. So it's I, not uh, thank you, form, madam. Yeah, form a neural network. It is a basic. It will be like when I talk about GAN, I can give an example which will help you to relate easily. Yeah, the uh, chat GPT, when you are talking about the chat GPT, will it be connecting to the, you are taking the help of the NLP also? So underlying the model will hmm. also use NLP. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, Jesse, can I add to the po one point actually? So, yes. See, uh, neural network, uh, if you think our brain, right? Uh, let us say, uh, we, if you are reading a book, okay? And you are reading some something about some information about some content from the book. Okay. So our brain will receive in a such a way that, okay, this is a book. This is how I have to collect some information. This is how I have to process to the, my brain actually. At the same time, the same context of the book or some information, which you suppose if you are reading through the, some kind of a Kindle or some other process, right? Okay. The way how it has been taken. It's a kind of because basically neural network is a kind of a methodology. Okay, where it will how you process your brain to human brain. Okay, so the different mediums of how you take it and how you process to the human brain. This is a basically a process method actually methodology how you train your brain actually the same goes to the chat GPT as well. Chat GPT has some kind of a model in because like our brain some kind of uh, so small information without nothing content in it. So as and when when you read through our information is going to sit in the persistent into the brain, like same thing it goes to the model as well, like how chat GPT is evolving with the content actually. Okay. I think when yeah, I talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mahinda. Yeah, when I talk about uh, GAN, right, with a small example, I think that uh, time probably it will help you to understand better. But all you need to understand just it, it is like a set of uh, neurons how it works, right? Uh, so you focus on a particular book or if uh, now everybody is attending to a session on generative AI. So you will your brain will model that whatever it will try to yeah. bring up the early memory, whatever you know about AI and then try to uh, see Be how you can relate and then make you ask that question, right? So it is it by itself it is a neural network so exactly similar to that it can solve or uh, it can handle any set of problem so similarly you can model a neural network to handle any set of problem or any set of concepts so it is more a concept and uh, uh, moving on the second part of the workflow is inputting a prompt right i think since chat gpt has got a real hype Everybody is around that chat GPT and that's why I've taken an example which is not relevant to chat GPT. Okay, we'll see that in the next slide. But uh, the second key part of a generative AI is 
prompt engineering. Um, Mahendra will cover a little bit more on that in uh, for subsequent slides. But prompting is nothing but you you uh, allow the users to uh, look for certain information or you to provide them with certain description or with some sample images or what kind of desired content they are looking for. So that's the second part of the workflow. So just imagine. So there is a in open a uh, years together. They have really trained and they have created a neural network based model. They have trained with lot of text by mining ex extremely huge terabyte of data and now they have created a, a model based called uh, chat GPT. Now the second step whatever you and I do is go in the description. We look for something right. We search that is the prompt you input a prompt and then chat GPT it will generate a content which is like uh, almost similar but it will like give you the flavor say for example now you ask about uh, generative way what it is etc chat GPT will give you a structured information on from different area and then uh, try to give you an elaboration of uh, generative AI. that's how it has so the at a high level gen AI will have three workflow uh, three parts to a workflow one is forming a neural network uh, by providing the images or uh, training that by giving a lot of text data sounds audio video images etc and second part is you allow them to prompt and third part is you generate content by uh, working on the input data whatever it is being received uh, we'll talk about uh, one example um, uh, mahendra can you move on So when we talk about uh, the when example, right? So now everybody knows chat GPT. So you input a text, the model, uh, it will help you mine through it and it will provide you the uh, consolidation of what you're looking for. Now I'll take a very example. Now we all know that, okay, whatever text you search for, it will provide you. You can, it is more like a, a glorified version of uh, Google, etc. So that would be make, but generative A has really very good relevance in the medical field, in the medical industry. There is something called precision medicine. I wanted to touch base this uh, because uh, when we talk about a terminal cancer patient or we talk about uh, a cancer patient, which is like a really uh, he's like uh, the it is kind of a different kind of cancer or there are set of cancer which has be patients who have to be treated. The way Gen A makes a very big difference is it can give you a treatment plan personalized to the particular uh, patient. Okay, so earlier, so now what would happen is normally when a pay, probably a cancer patient has been identified and he go for some kind of oncology, right? So normally we will do all the patient related data collection, his history or the different uh, current uh, growth or the uh, PET CT information, imaging information, the tissue growth, etc., the urine report, blood report, all of this report would be part of the collection of data. And then there would be already some molecular physiology studies which already been done. So currently these forms are already been happening like an individual doctor uh, will uh, go when ask for a genome testing or it uh, ask for a histopathology report etc. And that information based on the numerous set of patients right who have been treated or who are either they um, uh, whatever in uh, earlier can cancer related uh, studies been done that information will already be that physiology studies will already be also fed into the model as part of the uh, model training and just generative AI, you will not believe it's going to be create a huge difference because it will try to identify the treatment plan and path based on the current patient situation by analyzing the earlier molecular all the physiology microbiology immunology studies which has been done earlier and then it will give you a proper treatment plan and it will be personalized for that particular cancer patient. So this is really taking a very big boom on the um, um, medical field and you can also further Google about a drug therapy uh, 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 medical discovery and this is one concept called precision medicine where unlike the regular chat GPT or some kind of a code generation tools where generative AI is going to really pick it up but this is the area, this area in the precision medicine, it's going to make a real differentiation for some of the commonly untreatable or a rare form of different kind of ailments. So uh, it will help you create a personalized treatment plan based on the molecular studies it's going to evaluate. So will it be touching HIPPO also, madam? HIPPO standards? Uh, 
that i am uh, not sure uh, i am not sure probably i have to look back and uh, get back to you i'm not sure about that okay because when you are talking about the prescribed medicine it has to take the help of the hipo standards and hipo process and etc uh by so, default it will take i think yeah it should take uh, currently like yeah. i think there are certain organizations which we are which are working on creating a model foundation model based on that so ideally those standard uh, should come uh, but uh, for this precision medicine is an upcoming trend uh, i don't see any ready to use model currently available but this are one of the areas where genea can be used handily yes okay thank you madam uh, i i think they have started already putting some restrictions on these things uh, when it comes to medicine uh, right uh, because until a month uh, not even a month ago until 3 weeks or 4 3 weeks ago there used to be information coming up popping up in chat gpt or or even uh, other ai tools uh, related to uh, medicine and quite precise ones okay very mm -hmm. accurate information and uh, from the last two or three weeks i notice it it comes up with one uh, single comment saying uh, asking us to go and uh, meet a specialist doctor <laughs> it's not, cap not capable no. of uh, doing anything in medicine correct correct no no th those are textual information which is going to provide you right this is like whenever you search for a normal migraine it will always tell you brain tumor right so this is not this precision medicine is not related to that it is used by medical professionals where uh if you talk about uh, uh, robotics right even apollo protons have that robotic related surgery so it is more related to that it will be used only by uh, the professionals who are trained in that area not for uh, like the general uh, public so you cannot go and look okay. for yeah so it is like a restricted access and there of course there would be lot of legal consideration because we are passing through all the patient personal highly identifiable information right and the molecular physiological studies where it will come so it would be like hospitals like apollo or like there is a bigger set of uh, chains right globally so it is so what they will do is right across globe they will get the molecular physiology studies of say there is a peritoneal cancer or they uh, we can talk about uh, lung cancer so for that particular cancer maybe across the globe they will get numerous information up about different patient molecular studies and then train the model and then based on the analysis and outcome this genea can predict the treatment plan which has worked for other patient okay and the probability is always here and there but uh, this is a model uh, but whatever your question is more about the textual content is uh, any uh, you and i will create right so it, this would be having restricted access and there would be legal and compliance related requirements which have to be met because we are talking about personally identifiable data it is like Uh, ph data uh, uh, patient data it would be in ehr so it is so it should be restricted and uh, it would go through its own legal process so okay. model sir and user so for precision medicine uh, i don't see any model being available but there are a lot of white papers and model which uh, many of the uh, medical related industries are working towards this yeah okay <laughs> so i can give a real example right my mother in law uh, she passed away because of a peritoneal cancer but uh, the problem was we were not able to identify one particular pathology study okay uh, that pathology study if we would have known or if we if the appropriate corresponding doctor would have identified as part of that the different uh, molecular physiology combination they do it right see no, normally now what we do is we meet on uh, medical oncologist and he try to just uh, give you whatever would have worked earlier just imagine you could train a model with numerous of data which has already worked and then the probability of you getting a right treatment plan and path is much more uh, good or better than a human a single human with this limited knowledge can do that's a main differentiation is going to bring in but there is no uh, ready made uh, available model like chat gpt in this space we can move on uh, mahindra and sofia this uh, yes. someone was mentioning about the standards uh, was he talking about hipaa standards health insurance uh, oh you hipaa hipaa portability act okay i i was thinking it was different 
so i'm if it is hipa definitely all of the personally identifiable healthcare information should adhere to hipa standard so uh, that's why i said there are legal government and regulatory uh, mandates which every model should follow so whenever they train the data so that's why uh, uh, people have really trained chat gpt right because it's more talking about textual content but these we are talking about realistic data so uh, hipa standard would definitely be required in order to build the model and uh, as i said it is like personally identifiable data and uh, ehr it is highly restricted uh, so it it has to abide through law, all of the legal and government regulation i got it ma'am thank you okay we can move on mahindra okay <coughs> okay we are with that uh, practical this example ram here this is ram here yes ram so i wanted to know i mean like uh, uh, this kind of generative uh, models that are being used right to kind of create some steps and everything like you can train a thing by using prompt engineering like say that okay you can push it to a certain step wise schedule as such right but then when you are say for example talking to a incident management kind of a thing where you are trying to solve a ticket will you be able to kind of use leverage this kind of generative ai and say that okay if there's such a incident is coming in this engagement then what is the then what is the uh, steps to in, uh, resolve that particular incident for example so that kind of way generative ai can be used or implemented or will be thought about no generative ai uh, probably like mahindra you can add to it uh, generative ai is like uh, 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 it is like uh, basically on in terms of incident management i am not sure it can uh, directly work well there because here we are talking about uh, generating something new right uh, something like uh, uh, you look for uh, probably one way it can help you is if you are have uh, trying to get an incident and if you are to trying to solve a problem probably it can help you identify some of the uh, similar problems which has been already addressed in come up with the uh, way you need to take it forward i think that way it will definitely uh, help uh, around it mahindra you can add uh... Uh, i think uh, uh, see yeah go ahead say yeah, mahindra please add uh, later on i will add okay see uh, i think with the uh, not sure, uh, with respect to the incident management also there are a couple of scenarios where we can do that i mean that is how we can train that uh, whatever the model which you want to create it like suppose if you are facing some kind of an incident where you have the a typical uh, traditional <laughs> null point exception or something um, uh, somewhere we have to do it i think see uh, the concept behind generative ai is that whatever the data which you feed it to the model suppose it will take the prompts based on whatever the input which you give it and it will solve the problem okay at the same time uh, uh, i in the coming slides we will going to explain what are the tools which is helping you to build such a kind of this one like uh, uh, amazon code whisperer like tab 9 all these things it will certainly help you to when you are writing a code itself where it will it will give you the some kind of a security scanning or is there any any vulnerabilities which is in there in place or are you following the some kind of a standards which is there actually okay so i think uh, the incident management or whatever the use case which is we have actually the way how you train the model and we can use that one and it will help you so with that i think see when you take some example broad uh, incident management like suppose if you are working have a broadband connection where that incident is raised and uh, you, you have to talk you no need to talk to the customer care but you just log into that app and you can chat with that this is the problem this is the thing and then the back end call suppose if the internet is not working there if you check the whatever the options which is prompting it uh, up front and it will check the back end whether that the connection connectivity is there between your home and the server which is residing nearby up uh, and then next the next prompt will take place so the incident management has cert yes certainly can be used it but you have to train that model in such a way that uh, there is a large bulk amount of exception handlings for that particular instance is going to take in place i hope i answered your yeah. question sorry thanks i yeah. have a question but i uh, like rajan rajkumar said we will take it at the end of the session yeah ram ram another thing jansi has said that in the initial stage there is a databases to be connected 
in that database all the incidents are okay uh, provided and at the same time when you are raising one incident immediately it will pop up whatever the incidents are already in the database so that immediately you will get the solution got it yeah. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Uh, so that, that is the way generative AI will collect all the information related to the incidents. And when you are raising an issue, when you are writing something, immediately it will pop up around seven or eight uh, incidents. In that incident, you will be identifying whether my problem, uh, the solution is there available in that incident. Immediately it will solve you. Otherwise, it will try to come out with the model after huge volume of database, which is, I think, Jansi has suggested. Sure. So, uh, Ram, I think you got it. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, you are audible, Sanat. Hey, Ram, so we are basically right now working using uh, LLMs to get it to reason, okay? Not typically around incidents, but right from alerts. So we are basically trying to imitate what sort of reasoning we can do that typically we try to do in diagnostics of application systems based on uh, alerts, how you look at logs, how, what need, next step needs to be taken in terms of triaging, um, uh, in terms of monitoring, in terms of looking at knowledge or data business, uh, um, Ramana was talking about. And we are trying to get it to reason. So we are working on that right now. So it, at this point of time, the results that we are having is that, yeah, it seems like it is very possible for us to do that. But, you know, obviously we will have to see uh, how these things will go into production. Uh, that's a different challenge altogether. So, but yeah, there is definitely work. If you want, we can correct offline. Uh, we can share with you. Yeah, I will reach out to you, Sanu. Thanks. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Can I go ahead? Yeah, please, please, my inter, please go ahead. Okay, so yeah, uh, it was an interesting discussion indeed uh, to think about because this is the information. Because when you see the, since we are working on this generative AI, uh, when you come to this session, there are many people, like Jesse mentioned, different perspective on you know, artificial intelligence. But with this, right, everyone understood in a different, different context about the generative AI or AI, artificial intelligence. Our neural networks will go on to the brain and think that, yeah, this is the place where I have to, my understanding is inaccurate. And this is where I, my understanding is not relevant. So this is how that. Uh, adaptability of the human brain will adjust it the same way it will happen to the foundation models as well so the foundation models or whatever the language models which we kept it okay so it is the um, underlining technology that powers like an AI bots like such as uh, uh, chat gpt or this there will be a sophistication of a pattern recognized uh, trained on a vast ocean of a data to the model and then capable of generating like uh, whatever the text images and the whatever the ba based on the prompt which you have given to the uh, service actually okay the goal of any language model is not to is the initial goal of an, a language or large language models is to convincing the human language okay and then we have to think about the factuality of the uh, human language what i mean was like uh, suppose if you're uh, like like the same discussion well, previous time what we have like uh, somebody has some perception on the some concept it is like a convincing some human and then when we discuss something and when we come to the some kind of a common consensus and we we try to see that yes this is correct okay this is wrong this is correct so that is how that factuality of an accurate human language should, should work that is how we are driving to the uh, large language models as well okay but um, whenever we talk about and build about the language models right the context is very much important actually okay so if sub, uh, the context what you are going to say is very important like suppose if you are typing something i want some information from uh, this uh, this one in this one so you must specify to the chat whether it is a, any bot or whatever the application which you are building it the context is important actually like suppose if i want to create an image uh, where the context is like a, a, a man look like or a woman smiling or something to create image but if you are not specifying a particular context like a smile is the context which i want to do it okay but 
if you are not specifying it it gives the different results actually because that is how that information was trained and injected to the large language models so, so that is why like buddha said you have to question everything every time when you do something okay because uh, we have to question to that and we, we have to verify what it is whether that information is accurate or not because that is how that strong discussion which will happen actually okay uh, always whenever you get some kind of results from the various uh, um, uh, various uh, various llm models which you created and uh, you have to compare that information whether it is an accurate or not so that is the one of the principles behind what we are going to build in the language models okay let us take for example we do have two open source uh, op uh, whether uh, whether it is a chat gpt from open ai uh, google from uh, bard if you if you try to see that the same same kind of a prompt or text phrase which you give it to the chat gpt and see whether the uh, the same text phrase which you give it to brat if it is giving the same kind of results so we need to compare that so that is how the questioning questioning of your service is important actually okay when internet evolved right we try to do a lot of search actually whether it is giving the proper information or not that's the same way when the language models was built we have to question that and it whether it is it is giving the correct accurate information okay so and also giving feedback to the developers when the service was built um, okay it is very much imp imperative so that the the improve of the models should be uh, will become an uh, appropriate and it will give the right results to the next set of the uh, res uh, next set of people who is using that service actually okay and uh, um, <laughs> since the uh, since the evolution of this chat gpt are from the generative ai the boundary between the human and the computer cognitive capabilities has blurred considerably in the past six months because right we are we are not thinking because if you want to come to the, some kind of an innovation or something which you want to do it because earlier uh, we have to think we have to we used to learn from books we have to think whether this information is correct or not and then we have to come to the, some kind of a consensus or conclusion okay but i think uh, with this uh, a generative AI. I, I'm not sure where we are going to heading towards actually. Okay, with that, I think fundamental there are foundation models which is uh, broadly categorized based on the language models and the computer vision models and the generative models. Since this topic is mainly today's topic is mainly uh, confined to the uh, generative, uh, we are going to talk about uh, DALI, GAN, and uh, Vastel, um there is another called um, encoders which is related to the generative models okay um generally the generative AI models has broadly divided into three three things one is generative adversarial networks which i think uh, uh, jesse mentioned in the previous slide with an example how that has been taken care and the neural networks how you have to do it and also transform based uh, transform based models which is very much uh, going in pitching like uh, how we are going to train your chat gpt models or something another thing is like variational auto encoders uh, i i am little um, apprehensive about variational um, encoders because i i am not have much information on that currently but these are the i mean the, with respect to the generate uh, gnans and transformation based models i am certainly sure that uh, we, we will take the large leap into in terms of uh, how the models is going to create like uh, gnan how we are going to for example like image to image translation okay such as converting from picture to picture some daylight saving i think many of you uh, some if some people already using the uh, macbook pro if you see the background image uh, wallpaper whatever it is there uh, day, depends on the daylight saving and depends on the day and the night automatically the background image will change it actually so that is where this uh, maybe the technology behind that is that one that's what my assumption actually okay jesse now we will talk about uh, uh, generative adversarial networks uh, so the uh, here predominantly right if you look at uh, I just wanted to deal this with an example and it is a very big concept uh, everyone are learning and it is an evolving field and there are different styles to it 
So we'll just quickly try to see what are the different components this has and uh, with a relatable example. So when we talk about uh, GAN, right, it has basically, uh, it was uh, uh, created in uh, 2015 mm -hmm. by uh, okay. fellow with a uh, uh, couple of other folks. Uh, but the main idea is when we talk uh, about A, right, uh, it was always like it was limiting that it was either able to classify or it was either able to do a cluster or it was a, wow. uh, either able to do a plotting, uh, something like that. But oh, no. it was not really pointing to a specific uh, answer. It was not, uh, it oh. enabled A earlier, it enabled to help in the decision making. But it here, uh, it was, there was a point or there is a cutoff for that. So that's when I thought that probably like, okay, this needs something more than that. So, so the way the GAN was dis uh, 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 designed is to have two neural networks. So when you talk about supervised learning, we spoke about classification, linear regression, etc. right? Any model based on classification algorithm or any model based on linear regression will always have only one neural network. But the power of GAN is it has two neural networks, okay? Generator is one neural network and discriminator is another neural network. So the main purpose of generator is it will generate a lot of plausible data. It will uh, try to really create a lot of fake data or a lot of negative training examples for the discriminator, okay? So the discriminator is another neural network. It will learn by itself to distinguish generators fake data and from the real data. And then it is like a, something like a magnet where North and South Pole works, right? They don't, they work together, but they work against each other, right? It is exactly the same. That's why there is a center word called adversarial, right? They, they both work each against each other. They want other to fail. So one's gain is another's loss. Similarly, another's loss is one's gain. So that's how the GAN network is itself uh, uh, created. So if you look at a basic structure, right, the way it works is, the generator is, will work as a separate neural network. Discriminator will work as a separate neural network. So whenever you pass a random data, the random data will, the generator will create thousands of sample of instances uh, related to the random data and it will feed you to the discriminator. And discriminator will always have the real image and try to map against the fake instances, whatever generator has sent it back. And then it will try to identify that as fake and send it back to the generator. So when a fake instance image comes to back to the generator, generator will update its weight and it will try to uh, create another thousands of sample images. So let's take an example of a, a database of, uh, uh, let's take an example of a database of uh, thieves, okay? Uh, so say uh, in uh, India for all the, uh, the entire for the police hub, you have a database collections of a complete photos of all the thieves who are available, who are there, who are known for different cases in the uh, enabled digitally and it is in the form of a photo. So what discriminator would be trained with? All the terabyte information of the real photo images of the thieves completely in India or in a particular uh, region, the discriminator will help you to identify whether when you give a simple photo, it will try to identify whether that photo gets mapped to one of the thieves in the particular uh, model and give you back, okay? You will feed a lot of ter terabyte of real photo images to the discriminator. Now let's take an example. In a general situation, a case has occurred and uh, you all you have is a CCTV footage. And from the CCTV footage, we have identified say 10 images or 10 photo images of a likely identifiable culprit, okay? Nine photo, 10 photo images are there. One is thief, but unfortunately, the thief is wearing a mask. Let's take an example. And nine of them are not thieves, but a regular uh, fake photo who is not real. So what the generator will does is, based on the 10 inputs, whatever we are passing it random, right? It will try to create thousands of fake samples, okay? Based on the 10 images, whatever you create. So from the, say, let's now pass the uh, first instance of uh, first iteration where the real thief with the mask, you send it back with some uh, number of instances to this discriminator. So as the first iteration goes through, the discriminator will map it against the real photo and it will always tell tells it back that it is a fake because the person is wearing a mask, okay? And then generator will try to emulate more and more combinations of uh, the sample data 
uh, with little mask or with hiding the mask it will try to go through lot of iteration and then it will keep on updating or training itself that okay this uh, particular it will add weight to it okay then and create create more similar instance of the image and finally it will ensure that the discriminator maps it back and identify that as a real image so this is the power of gan and uh, there are different styles to it and uh, and the discriminator will also update and train itself with the negative data right so uh, it will never go through through the first iteration but gradually as and when it gets trained right it will really get you there and finally you will be able to achieve what you are looking for identify and map the person with mask into the one of the photo in the thief database so that's how this entire uh, uh, gan flow works so in crisp right uh, i think it is a really deeper concept uh, everyone are learning but in general what we need to understand here is it has two neural networks the both work try to work against each other but the beneficial for the model is a whole and that has two components one is a generator which will create lot of uh, fake samples of data and the other one is distinct uh, discriminator it will distinguish between the fake data and the real data so that's how this entire model will work and there are a lot of uh, uh, different types within the gan you can google and one of them can be a style based gan each of them is designed for a particular problem statement so each of them will have one particular neural network uh, type of problem it will solve and this has both a generator component and the discriminator component we can move on mahendra yeah i think uh, um these are the new lingos um i think some of them which we have to we already discussed in some extent actually with respect to the foundation models language models prompts is i said right it's like a test phrase which we will be discuss uh, which we will be giving it to the instructions to the um, to the system <laughs> which should give the uh i'll decide output based on the algorithm which was brought in okay uh, prompt engineering is uh, like how you are going to train your chatbots to act like a more of an eff uh, as efficient as an human being actually so everybody knows that chat gpt is an open ai service uh, which was uh, in <clears throat> which was released in last november uh, which works on the large of uh, large language models to create the content hallucination is something um it is like something whenever we get some information from the chat gpt or any of the information which was there okay so we must have we must should have an um, that is generally it's a factually incorrect or irrelevant because that is how that large language models has been trained upon because uh, it is like a, a simple Uh, if you if you think about our child right the way how you train because uh, if you say something about uh, uh, some particular object yeah this is an apple yes this is an apple so that is how you train it but at the same time when you check with the kid and asking him to say whether it is a uh, apple or not if he says something that is brain is not trained in such a way that whether it is irrelevant actually okay that is how the same same up uh, the same concept which we are applying uh, since we are talking to um, artificial intelligence as well the way how you train that that is how the res results will come like how you write in the test cases in the in, a, in general application section okay neural networks is uh, <laughs> because right uh, with respect to the hallucination because we we have we are if you are not setting the correct context it will give the in uh, not desired results actually suppose if x is um, yeah, x is said that yes fail so uh, because the pronoun what you are going to uh, giving it in the text context right so maybe uh, it gives a different result because the context like like i said right humans having a common sense but a doesn't have a common sense because we know how that it works and how we have to understand it but a machine how you train it it will give the results so that's where this uh, authenticity information like uh, when you get when you get some information you should have always authenticity about that whatever the information is correct or not okay um that leads to me uh, to talk about uh, some of the applications which generative ai is using like uh, if you take this image processing 
because a lot of um, whatever the images which is having a low resolution we can if you see a lot of apps which is generated actually um, <clears throat> which is generated about to how that in low resolution because the in olden days we do have a, some kind of limitations to take the photographs which was uh, but with the generation with respect to the image processing we can able to create a high highly definition high resolution images using the image processing there are certain tools various tools plethora of applications which was in place actually film restoration yes indeed uh, i think most of the uh, 90s 80s movies now they are migrating to i mean the processing to the uh, highest resolution um, the processing and all will take place like 60 frames of 22 which is the which is there earlier actually okay healthcare has definitely uh, taken care i mean uh, in the western countries uh, psychologists uh, physiologists are suggesting that in order to have deal with the mental health of the people okay so they are taking the uh, assessments of uh, whatever the track record which they have to the chatbot. I mean, very, uh, because it's like a human and uh, chatbot interaction. It can be assisting uh, some kind of an administrative uh, cognitive behavior therapy to the chat. Actually, I don't know how the how effectively that works. But in India also, there is a services like uh, you know, there are last few years there are some apps like Evolve, Visa, and Amaha. Uh, which has on the mix of a data tracking where the information is taking from that and uh, using that one okay audio synthesis yes uh, any computer uh, generated voice may be transferred into um, sounds like a human voice and using generative AI. okay i um, before coming to this meeting i was i saw one uh, one site where uh, the runaway ml uh, site where it will create uh, uh, just based on the text on this one you can able to uh, generate the audios and videos and uh, what else you just give the prompt actually okay but i always in um, insist on uh, when you are building something application when you are using that application the prompt is very much important when you do something actually like uh, a man um, whatever the prompt which you give that based on that that image will generate okay it may be a, a large computing will happen so but that's how it will it will work actually because when you see that uh, uh, um, long time i mean i think long last month or few months back actually they cloned the voice of the drake it was become a lot over the night overnight uh, uh, tiktok population um, popular actually so whatever that uh, happening from the generative ai okay so another thing which we are going to discuss about is like um, uh, uh, text generation yes uh, text generation everybody knows that chat gpt has taken a, uh, a, a version i mean version of text is which is coming from whatever the models which we have and also taken a lot of large people's attention actually and product design yes indeed uh, suppose if you have building a house and if you are working for an interior design or if you are working for an automotive design all these things right a certainly helps in large lot of lot of models and it will give the personalization actually okay art generation yes uh, there is some uh, there are some apps which will uh, certainly help you to draw your art based on the text and the image which you provided as an input so applications yeah these are the certain some of the applications which we which are all helping to create a generate generative AI model uh, up, ge through generative AI actually yeah uh, and i think uh, this is a key path uh, 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 where like there are a lot of uh, uh, challenges uh, which uh, we need to address uh, one is that uh, there are a lot of uh, lack of uh, transparency and uh, some of the times like <clears throat> even uh, personally we have experienced that uh, some of the data are like really unpredictable like uh, even i was looking for one specific documentation and there was a github url provided but when i look into that it was not there so in some scenario in some of the circumstances uh, the models are unpredictable so there is a lack of transparency so mainly they don't provide the source of the information because they have trained the model with a huge amount of information available from the internet or wherever possible so the source of the data in which the models are trained on is uh, not there so that's a lack of transparency and then accuracy in some of the times 
uh, it might be inaccurate and it can also be fabricated. And, uh, and the third important aspect is maybe it's in some sometimes when we talk about something political, it might be biased based on how it's been trained on and what information it's been provided to the model. And also when we talk about code generation, right? I think Muru had a question like there are a lot of tools related to code generation, which we will cover as part of STLC. Uh, but uh, when you take that code and put it back, we do not know from where are we copying anything from as an intellectual property or there any copyright or piracy violations, etc. Right? So that is the biggest challenge when you try to use that as part of STLC. And then cyber security and fraud is always there. We talk about healthcare, we talk about personal information, uh, which can get leaked, etc. And then uh, sustainability uh, and I think uh, uh, it will have uh, uh, since we are training this on a huge amount of data, it needs really a huge amount of processing power. Yeah, in fact, yeah. Um, uh, sustainability is a, one of the um, important factor, uh, which was Capgemini was uh, very much uh, emphasizing on a lot of factors actually. So sustainability is one of the important things because uh, as a human, uh, we should have a empathy towards society. Uh, empathy towards uh, whatever we are building we should we should have the whatever the product which you are using it we should use it in a very wisely and uh, responsibly okay like i said uh, the revolution how the el electricity internet and uh, what we, uh, steam engine has brought the same thing is applicable to the generative ai as well it become it's going to be a, like how our um, uh, gen, uh, it's going to be a gen, more of an, a general purpose technology okay it will be going forward generative ai is going to be part of our life like how electricity and internet is going to be there okay so um that is where we have to very much think about it so when you are building something you you just don't create just because the hype is there and because we are going to do some kind of a fundamental shift don't create an apps or something like that make sure that you have to think about the um uh, our health responsibility also that's part of sustainability okay um this is uh, uh, one slide actually which we want to talk about i think we have covered already some extent in terms of where exactly uh, well we're dealing with uh, uh, how this in various sectors the generative AIs is just there like uh, healthcare which uh, Jan, uh, jesse mentioned about uh, the personal incident uh, how it happened and also how this is happening and uh, how the future computing is going to be because right like i mentioned um whatever we do kind of a synthesizes or image creation or whatever the image generation uh, this looks fancy but uh, with respect to that uh, uh, computing work right we required a large amount of uh, large amount of hard disk or storage capacity and the computing and the network and the bandwidth of the in internet and all these things going to be taken care okay and arts and cultures and uh, uh, when i say arts and cultures there may be a chance that if you see many people uh, might have watched Marvel movie, um, how that um, um, uh, because they, uh, when they when they created that movie, they might have used around few four thousand to five thousand artists or creators who want to do it. But when it comes to uh, using maybe going forward, we might you end up with the fifty to sixty people using the the kind of uh, kind of a uh, <laughs> kind of a way which generative AI is doing it maybe with a few people and uh, with a few people we can able to create a movie and as such actually so that's where we are heading to but yeah we need to uh, pull our socks and do whatever we want to do it for the further upskilling ourselves okay education skills and learning yes indeed uh, because uh, that's how that uh, computer society of india how they are doing it uh, with respect to um, educate whatever the concept which is uh, trending on such so uh, education in which, which is imperative for the going forward and uh, economic progress yes like i'm going to talk about in the coming slide how this is going to impact the um, various sectors like customer service and all those things actually yeah these are the um, 
some of the trends which is happening and the development which is happening in the generative AI, like hyper personalization like uh, like i mentioned suppose if you want to create an image artistic image um i if you 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 will be giving a lot of uh, like how you see in the swiggy or Jomato with the various options for the uh, culinary from the different restaurants like that you can do your personalization in terms of your app as well like uh, this is how uh, suppose um, when you when you purchase a mobile I, iphone mobile or android mobile uh, they will give the some kind of a basic set of uh, an application application but how you uh, because and then they will give the leverage to do whatever the personalization how we do how you want to look like actually like a background image you want to set it for whatever you want and all those things actually okay and another trend which is like a conversational ai which is going to be a huge um, um, concept which is happening right now because like uh, we already um, innumerable number of times which we have discussed and uh, AI, AI, AI is for scientific research indeed yes uh, we are doing some extent like uh, i like um, jesse mentioned that the duck discovery which is happening right now uh, where the generative ai taking the um, numerous uh, you know, clinical information and uh, so that we can able to give the desired uh, prescription to the, um, the patient actually and image generators and code and apps i'll tell you we are going to talk about what are the code and app builders actually since we are from the tech background and video production yes indeed we can like i mentioned that marvel movie maybe we can do that in the with the less people and using generative way and then do that and the generative design like like a lot of interiors and automotive cars and how it has to be designed so maybe the generative way certainly helps me because when you when you when you're trying to purchase some car, right? Uh, if you ch interact with a chatbot assistant or virtual assistant, uh, you you might request that this is how my car should look like. You will be giving some kind of a prompts, and it will give you that image. Yes, if this is image is correct, and you are saying yes, and then based on that, uh, the respective engineers will go and build that image, uh, build that car actually. Okay and the speech synthesis. Yes, it uh, certainly helps in a different extent of uh, speech actually intelligent process automation yes and uh, i think some of them asked about the service now incidents how we have to take care of this i think automation incidents has uh, certainly helps in intelligent way and uh, we can do that actually and uh, generate music like i mentioned um uh, a, a generated song uh, cloned voices from drake uh, the that weekend itself it reaches to the 8.5 millions uh, plus views on the tiktok so that's the greatness of the generative ai okay so as i mean um the these are the predictions which is happening in the generative ai uh, from 2020 by 2025 will producing 10 percent of data right now it is less than one percent so whatever the gen chat gpt or bot or whatever the um i am ibm watson code whatever it is providing the test data which is still less actually there is so much of uh, there is so much of data which uh, still we need to train to that model actually so by 2025 it will generate uh, will be 50 percent of drug discovery and development initiatives that's where we are heading towards because uh, that's where it required because at the end of the life people's life is very much important to that's where we are going for that one okay and uh, by 2026 conversation a deployments within the contact centers like it will reduce by 80 percent billions it doesn't mean that we are losing our job but we have to upskill in the sense that we need to go for training in some extent like uh, in some extent like um, uh, what is the next step which i have to take care actually because see when the when as a human we when the calculator was invented we didn't think that okay since we are in calculator was invented we lost something and then we we had we go ahead and invented computer and then from desktop laptop now we are going to the mobile though so the tradition has to be uh concept i mean it has to be um, um application modernization certainly will help in go in going forward we have to take it forward that one so that's where that uh, it will never cost by 80 billions and uh, by 27 27 35 30 percent of the manufacturers will use generative enhance their product development effectiveness so that's where we are heading by 2031 yes this is the number which was given by gartner 
so it is projected to reach one 126.46 billion actually so this is the just a statistics about how generative is going to impact okay that is there uh, with that um, uh, uh, there are some tools which is certainly help you to build your uh, um, the tools which is generated through the generative ai okay uh, one of them from the i just broadly divide into different categories actually um like uh, amazon code jeep um, code whisperer uh, github copilot tab 9 i think uh, jesse is going to discuss uh, is going to demonstrate the demo about how that is tab 9 which is helping uh, uh, programming people and also ibm watson code open ai and this one with respect to the visual generator uh, there is a, a DALI and the mid journey and uh, I want to talk about uh, DALI um, because uh, uh, the acronym of DALI is uh, an uh, surrealist artist called uh, uh, arti uh, artist called Savlodor Dili. It is like a DALI and view and uh, his character name is Eve in the one of the fixer movie called valley so that is how that uh, uh, is has come actually that name has come and the mid journey is uh, um it's an independent research organization where you they are using the generative ai labs um, generative ai programs which generates images from the input text which you are going to give okay so uh called prompts basically we are call it and uh stereo ai is a uh, an art generator not with respect to the image and but it's an art basically suppose if you want to generate in uh, some kind of a movie a image uh, a, a woman is smiling or a picture a, a man with the seriousness in something so it will give some kind of an images on all those things so that's where we are heading to and also uh, crayon is another art generator okay audio generators there are something like replica murphy is a great example of how that audio is going to generate and uh, text generators like how i think this is pretty much uh, chat gpt and bard but one th one difference which i would uh, point out between the chat gpt and google bard is that uh, google bard always gives the real time information uh, because uh, since it's a inception on since it's the product of uh, uh, google but uh, chat gpt has uh, has the limitation in terms of like uh, for example right uh, since i'm a java guy i try to search uh, how the spring security is there actually but it's still taking the 2021 information which uh, where uh, how that uh, web security adapter has been extending it actually but when it comes to the real time it has a, a lot of change in the uh, spring security point of view so that's where we have to think about whether we have to use it and that's what i'm thinking everything cross verification is the key whenever you want to take some information which is coming from the chat gpt or whatever the chat <coughs> chatbot assistant which you are using it okay another one um, the next section is the foundation models uh, this one is uh, amazon bedrock is uh, and uh, amazon bedrock and uh, um Amazon Bedrock is something which is uh, managed by the AWS, uh, which was built by the foundation models uh, by uh, engaging with the third party services like um, 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 th third party people like um, Entropy and uh, other people and Strawberry, uh, Stra uh, Strary.ai, something where they are adapting, uh, creating the. I mean, basically, it is like an API based actually, where the foundation models will be leveraged. Entropy, entropic. Yeah, so thank you. So, so my uh, uh, sorry, this uh, sorry to interrupt you. Just also here, uh, I just only one thing on this slide is that uh, did uh, Microsoft also has come with the, their own bar or? It's, it's only Google bar because I I came across uh, months back that Microsoft has also launched their path. Is it the same thing or they, they have different technology? Um, I mean, in uh, Google has a bard, okay? okay. Uh, but uh, uh, Amage, uh, Azure, I think Microsoft is already tied up with the open AI, right? Okay, so, so uh, the, the question uh, uh, where I'm coming from was that, is that 
the concept is the same, right? Whether it's a Google or a Microsoft, the the uh, the backend technology is the same, right? Yeah, the concept the concept is same. Like it's how that uh, cloud uh, cloud computing yeah. is, is there. It is like it is more on the conversational AI only. Both yeah, all yeah. Okay. Chat GPT. Uh, uh, Google Bard, Microsoft Bard, whatever yeah. uh, related to text related searches, the fundamental would be the conversational AI part. Okay, yeah, got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank so, in much. the interest of time, I think we have one more slide. I think uh, you can, uh, it is more on whatever technologies uh, or whatever the major market players. Uh, if uh, someone can, uh, I'll, I quickly Let's want see, to. I Okay. Uh, Jesse, I have one small info before you go for a demo. I just have a one announcement with respect to that. Uh, I'll just take this one minute. Uh, I won't take much time. So uh, Amazon has uh, announced uh, there is a concept. Uh, there is a service called Health Scribe. It is a generative a based clinical documentation service. It's not yet released. Okay, they are going to release on July 29th uh, in the New York in the AWS Summit. Basically, what this service is doing going to do is um, um, basically whenever uh, health scribe is a, a kind of a clinical documentation where if you reach, if you go to hospital, uh, when the patient is giving some kind of in, um, a speech, uh, basically it will take the speech. Um, it's like a conversation between the physician and the uh, uh, patient where the speech recognition is translated into the some kind of an uh, summary and it will be going and recorded into the EHR like a hel uh, electronic health record service. So that way that certainly helps the uh, physicians to not to spend a lot of time writing on the lot of notes and uh, yeah, that will uh, it, it's like it will create a summary basically what the patient is like suppose if he's giving some kind of a I have this pain so what is the pain which he mentioned in that one so it will go and record it in that one so like uh, microsoft is having a noise and uh, google is having a lucky suki okay so i just want to tell that it's going to be announced in the, in the coming uh, uh, july 29th okay Tim. yeah yeah thanks mahindra so I think it's already one and a half hours and I think uh, as a human brain, we will not be able to uh, uh, extend that, right? I think uh, the productivity will be less. So what I wanted to finally touch base on is, uh, I think uh, someone also asked how in STLC, what kind of Gen AI tools can be leveraged? Uh, I, actually, we wanted to cover, but uh, I think it was too much for a one hour session. Uh, so as STLC for technical design document generation, reverse engineering of code, uh, there are tools possibilities are there, but currently uh, the tools are predominantly being uh, available for code generation, automatic code generation, and uh, secondly, test uh, code generation. And on the infrastructure as a code component related to CI CD, uh, there are some Gen AI tools available. So, in this, I have Visual Studio Code and I have created a simple React.js application, uh, and I have installed a tool called Tab9, and it is an automatic code generator. It comes as a plugin. I have extended, uh, I have created and uh, deployed that as an extension plugin into Visual Code. Now, the way it will work so easily, right? Uh, say, for example, for a function to uh, uh, um, create a, a Fibonacci series. Let's take an example. And when I say enter, it will automatically generate a code and it will ask you and you can accept. OK, so uh, uh, for enterprises, there are a lot of other issues related to uh, copyright, etc. But this has become so powerful that if you remember, like, uh, uh, like look at below, uh, I wanted to create a simple linear expression and then uh, it has created a code. And if I wanted to get the data from it, it creates most of the basic structure. So that's how easily the some of the code generation tools are. But I think for an existing application for already enterprise application, there might be a lot of challenges on relating the functional aspects to it, but it is still going to get beneficial. A lot of uh, POCs are uh, coming up. Uh, every enterprises, every organization, every IT services company are trying to see how this can be really helpful in code generation. But uh, this is tab nine. I just wanted to give a small flavor on uh, how it would work. So you can install this in uh, Visual Studio Code uh, as a plugin, as a plugin extension. But is this coming as uh, 
as part of free version or professional version because last time when i installed it most of the services i mean most of the uh, this uh, yeah it, uh, whatever i have is uh, yeah i did i also had pro as well but now i have uh, this one comes uh, as a free version only so that might be of course there might be a lot of uh, uh, offerings which will come only in the commercial version uh, but uh, this one the basics of certain code whatever it comes up it comes available as part of a free plugin only madam jansi will it work on uh, jupiter notebook jupiter notebook is a laptop yeah it, it supports python java dot net react angular node js uh -huh. i think most of the tools support all of technologies and frameworks so how to install that this open so, a yeah this is a visual code studio right this is a visual code studio mm. you go to uh, there is something called extensions so here in extension okay, okay. you need to go and search tab name okay 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 so i it will uh, go in google i think i will uh, get the yeah, yeah, support right yeah correct yeah, correct yeah. excellent thank you in fact so, i think uh, AD, uh, aws has that uh, code whisperer uh, where uh, we can it works as an a a pair programmer which will create uh, uh, so suppose if you queue some kind of a create a function like how jesse sold that create a function for the Fibonacci series it will give you that uh, suggestions how that code is that is how that uh, train models has been done and then it will generate the code and see whether it is applicable to you and uh, it will generate that code actually like a github copilot is another a ai pair programmer which is comes into the microsoft actually yeah thank you so much mahinder and jancy you gave a very good uh, interactive session of uh, generate ui excellent uh, session thank you so much yeah thank you thank you ramana thank you Thanks. thank you ramana yeah. Yeah, so the presentation we will share. Yeah, yeah, so if the presentation will be available, that's what the question. <laughs> uh, we will, uh, we will yeah, share yeah. it with Sunil. Okay, hey, uh, Jansi, small mm -hmm. request. Can you add in your PPT some of the websites? Yeah, uh, I think we, we have the references already. Yeah, please, please. Huh? Some more, yeah. I think, so that uh, the the baby generative people will understand yeah yeah sure sure <laughs> we'll do baby work yeah, sure. so uh, okay. i had yeah. a last question if you don't mind if you yeah, can sure, sure. it yeah um see there was an interesting question which was posted in uh, one of the um, uh, aws um, co no uh, code uh, tool right similar tool for mesa so how does um, uh, like these tools can, um, you know, give the cost optimization part of the uh, code. Let's say I have a legacy code and which can uh, basically, uh, you know, do some, you know, when I do from Python to Java or something like that, then um, uh, so what sort of, uh, how much memory it is using, how much CPU it is using. So, from that perspective, any 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 thoughts there? So I think uh, which way I think most of the uh, major IT services come organization are trying to see how much uh, code uh, code or cost optimization or how much developer benefits percentage which we are able to acquire using this. But to answer you right, that is completely a different aspect. I don't think Gen A uh, will be able to uh, run through and provide you an optimal benefits with respect to code optimization. But uh, when you talk about legacy modernization, right, I think that where these tools uh, can be of little bit help. Say, for example, you have written certain sub part of code in JDK 1.7 or 1.8, where the way you iterate through a for loop was completely different than what we have in Open JDK 11 now, right? So that way you can say that, why don't you write it in uh, JDK 11 and make it right? I think that way it will help you to optimize, but it is not that magical that you say that, okay, modernize uh, all of this application code into uh, completely to JDK 11 in Spring Boot. I think that this code generation tools will not do. They are maturing towards that, uh, but uh, at this point in time, it is in, uh, it is evolving, uh, but it is definitely of help, right? Uh, because uh, when I was doing POC, like we are working, trying to see 
work on a real time enterprise project uh, it has a lot of uh, challenges right you need to really work on the functionality right and the data will not be as easier as we get in, in the trained model so there are a lot of challenges to it but it is still bringing a lot of benefits to it like um, rather than you looking for some of the latest library how to write a performance optimized code right the way mm -hmm. you would perfectly write the code you what you do is go google and try out what the latest libraries are what the latest framework and try to adopt it but these tools uh, been modeled appropriately to latest ones right and you update up do an upgrade properly it will definitely do the proper recommendation so it is in the early stage ashita so we will have to get there uh, slowly okay okay no any direction in terms of the tools which can complement this um, anybody is in that direction like if you look yeah, at the what, roadmap uh, of the tools like yeah, the whatever tools, you used yeah uh, tools are, are there in the really, direction yeah, yeah correct in that direction only copilot is like very uh, it is like a little bit mature than other tools and then code whisperer uh, it is also much more mature than the, the other tools tab name uh, and all of these are coming up but as of now uh, copilot is the uh it's like it is running uh, it is really running fast in that way so that would uh, that is taking a lead actually okay. so it is a freeware madam open no, no, nothing, you know, nothing comes for free <laughs> nothing comes free it has, an ent uh, oh, it, okay. it has an enterprise version where say you have hundreds of developers and you can also have a server so as and when you develop in particular knowledge the server can train from what you code and then also train the model by itself i think uh that how most of these uh, tool sets work okay so uh, what would be the uh, you know cap gemini strategy in terms of these um, uh, towards genai tools and adoption and where they want to get uh, get there like what do you uh, what's their future strategy in terms of cap gemini right uh -huh. cap gemini i think i'm Uh, I'm, it might not be right to talk uh, in this forum, uh, Shita. But in general, all of the IT services companies are investing a lot and trying to see how much really it helps uh, for the developers. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Uh mm huh. Okay. Okay. Just yeah. have one last Thank question. You. So here, mm -hmm. basically, the neural neural designing is a key concept, right? For anything, initial to start up with it. creating a yeah, neural, neural networks now yeah that's what uh, when we talk about amazon bedrock some of the foundation models are already built out so you don't have to like uh, you don't have to really build a neural network mm -hmm. some of the models are already available you need to see and educate yourself how do we really use the appropriate model fetch appropriate model or pay the cost for it so uh, that's what if you want to really build something new then it would be like uh, it is it by itself it takes its own course okay okay i had asked one question on how, what kind of tool could be used for uh, doing an enhanced search using generative ai which generative ai tool could be used for doing an enhanced search for example you are searching for an application which you don't have any idea about and we are trying to search in capgemini what could be done you know nothing is available then we go outside in google world and internet then which is the one tool which could help us generate a contextualized search yeah all conversational ai tools would do that right from uh, uh, chat gpt and uh, right from uh, and, and also the plans which you going to take it actually like support okay, gpt3 yeah. gp4 so mm -hmm. everything like it's like a uh, if it is a product which you are using it Uh, some of them have the limitations like community edition which you are using it and if you use the ultimate edition uh, it might give you a uh, a detailed information something like that okay so yeah yeah thanks <laughs> sorry uh, can i ask a question like if you uh, if it time permits or if it is okay with you let with the last question uh, yeah yeah sure sure Sure, See, sure. most of our challenges in terms of like uh, modernization right so move from oracle to the you know predominantly heavy uh, cost to low cost kind of a thing postgres ql or something like that right so so um, like i i can get this code done through any of these tools and then how much of this code i can use in my you know uh, client deliverables or client engagement yeah, that is a debatable question so uh, every <laughs> organization is going through legal constraints okay because 
uh, we the main problem with these all these models are the source of the model trained data is not available. So even if you get some code, are there any piracy violations? Are there any copyright issues? Is something uh, whether uh, uh, even the POCs, uh, which some of the enterprises are really considering, right? Uh, or they are con considering for uh, the lower business critical applications only. So I think still not. I think that's what I'm saying. In software development life cycle, it has not become so much mature. So it is evolving. So everybody is trying putting their hands together, but it is going to be the future. Maybe in few years now, we will not talk about this anymore. We will say that, okay, we will get into a new trend altogether. But at this point in time, because of all the copyright issues, it is like uh, uh, there are a lot of limitations uh, to making it to production availability. So uh, everybody is working towards that, but there is a huge potential that we can be uh, assured. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for the input. Uh, indeed, whatever the tool, right? Like if let, let's take example of code whisperer, uh, it has is the code responsibility. It, it gives the reference tracker for the whichever the open source code, which you are taking it actually. So that is from where that uh, the training foundation models has been built based on the open source code actually. So, so that is how it will be there because since it is an AWS product, whatever the service which you are building in the AWS, that their code coming into the into that uh, uh, suppose if you want to build some kind of an sqs uh, uh, sqs core or something create an sqs uh, functionality for this one under or uh, dynamo db something yeah because their service their code it's fine but other services like how jesse mentioned because it's a challenging actually whether we have to take it with there any kind of an um, uh, uh, copyrights uh, issues which is going to come yeah that's there Janzi, uh, Janzi, thank you for taking your valuable time and uh, uh, making this webinar so successful and appreciate your patience of explaining uh, each and every dot very clearly. Thank you. Thank you, Harsha. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for the session. Thanks, John. Uh, Thanks, excellent everyone. session, Amma. Congratulations. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Very Bye-bye. nice session. Thank you. Yeah, Janzi and Harsha, hey, once again, okay, best of luck to you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.